Good day, ladies and gents, and welcome back to the icy cold waters of the North Atlantic. We are continuing our mission from the last episode. We're still looking for the submarine with the commandos, and we've come across a second pack of submarines. At this point, we've already identified them. We have a Victor 2, a Victor 1, and another November, and we've managed to sneak almost into the middle of them before they realized that we were actually here by coming in above the thermal layer. They are all below the thermal layer at this time. Now, I have good targeting solutions for both the November and the Victor 2. So, torpedoes in the water, first one on the November, and second torpedo heading south towards Victor 2. The Victor 2 has just realized that we're here and got a solution of its own, and it has just released a torpedo itself. Unfortunately, we've broken wires to both torpedoes on launch, although I'm not too concerned about that. My solutions are good. Both torpedoes are on passive homing only. And we're going to go full hard right rudder, that's hard starboard rudder. 15 down on the planes, 15 down on the bubble. I'm trying to get down to the thermal layer so I can use it as a bit of a shield for the incoming torpedo. And I'm trying to turn in underneath it. We are at very, very close range to the Victor 2. So my hope is that we'll be able to cross its path before it goes active. We're up to 10 knots here. I'm not going any further than that at the moment. While the Victor 2 is definitely knows where I am, the November definitely knows where I am, and it's running away as it's got its own Mark 48 chasing it down. The Victor 1 has only just started pinging at this point, so it doesn't have a firing solution, I don't think. We've shifted through the thermal layer, and at this point, the Victor 2's torpedo has not gone active yet. We're leveling out. And the torpedo just went active and started seeking, but we've just crossed paths with it. So when it swings back and begins its search to its left, we're already free and away. Now the Victor 2 is diving really hard there. And it looks like it's managed to dodge the first pass of our Mark 48. Mark 48 is turning back on the Victor 2 now. We're all stop. I'm trying to be as quiet as possible at this point. Since the Mark 48 didn't lock onto the Victor 2 instantly, there is a risk that it could... Ah, shit. Yeah, I was right. Yeah, it's, it's acquired us. The Mark 48 has acquired us and is closing in. Um, okay... So head flank, we are starting to cavitate. 30 degrees down on the planes, I'm gonna try and dive under the Mark 48. And let's go 30 degrees full starboard. I'm going to try and drop a decoy right in front of its path and then go silent as we pass underneath it. Hopefully it'll lock onto the decoy and won't turn back. All right, decoy is in the water. Ooh, ooh, the Victor 2 went too deep. Uh, the Mark 48 detected the decoy and is doing its turn to try and bypass it. This is something that all Mark 48s are actually programmed to do when they detect a decoy. They turn away and then turn around and try and reacquire the target from the side, but we're turning in underneath it and twisting with it. So we go back to level. And the 48 has failed to acquire. Oh, nope, it's turned back. It has turned back. All right, so 25 rise on the planes. We are at full ballast up and full right turn. Again, attempting to turn over the top, and that was really close. God damn it, I'm almost killing myself with my own torpedo. All right, I'm going to run for the thermal layer. So 30 degrees up plane. We're going to go straight. Keep it at flank speed at this point. The 48 is tracking in the direction of the wreckage of the Victor 2. It may have acquired the shrapnel from the Victor 2 that, um, yeah, it dove too deep and imploded. Not well, starting to cavitate. Back off on the throttles a little bit here, slow it down. Alright, so the Mark 48 hasn't turned back at this point. It's still heading towards where the Victor 2 was. 
and we are now above the thermal layer so I can back it off here I think we're safe all right so I had a really good plan for taking everybody out there just get back below the thermal layer again there we go we're not cavitating now um, had a really good plan to try and engage them from the inside of their formation but uh, that almost went horribly 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 wrong bit of luck that the Victor 2 decided to kill itself but I would prefer to have sunk it to be perfectly honest all right there we go we're sitting just on top of the thermal layer God, cavitating again slow down All right, it looks like we're all safe, and looks like we got the November. Our, Mark, our northbound Mark 48 was tracking nicely. We got the November taken down, so that's the November out. We've now only got the Victor 1. I am concerned about this 48 still coming back. No, I, I think we're good. I think we're good at this point. So. What is that? Oh, uh, that's the um, that's the Victor 2's torpedo. We've just reacquired it. It's still seeking north. It hasn't picked anything up yet, so it's just doing its uh, its passive hunt. All right, we've just reacquired the Victor 2, or the Victor 1, rather. We've dropped down to five knots, so we've redeployed the towed sonar array, and we've managed to pick it back up. It's deep. It's about 750 meters down. What's it doing down there? We've only got a 39% solution on this one, so what I might do is turn in on it and then we'll just slowly creep up on the Victor 1. I've actually got to be really careful about my torpedo launches here, as I sort of mentioned briefly in the last video. Because this is a campaign, you only have a certain amount of supplies on the submarine. Any damage you take can receive minor repairs, but major repairs have to be done back at port. And when you run out of supplies, you know, your torpedoes, noisemakers, so on and so forth, you need to return to port in order to reload these. And doing that, of course, takes time. Time in which the Soviet forces are able to complete mission objectives without you stopping them. At this point, I'm actually only down to a handful of torpedoes left, and we still haven't found our objective to a submarine, so I really can't afford to waste them. One torpedo launch has to kill one submarine or one target. So we've spent about seven minutes slow boating at this point, just letting the towed sonar array do its thing. We're currently up to a 68% solution. The target is 7.5 out. We're just descending below the thermal layer. I was not getting a higher solution I figured the thermal layer must have been interfering with that so we're just gonna level out just underneath the layer still in the shadow zone not that that really works all that well when the submarine we are hunting is beneath us we're up to 71 percent I could definitely fire a torpedo at this time but I am a little weary after the Victor 2 managed to outmaneuver our last Mark 48 to send it back in our direction. I can't, or really I don't want that to happen again. Now we're gonna dive a little deeper here. I'm gonna 20 degrees down on the planes, 20 down on the ballast, and I wanna try and reduce the angle that the torpedo is going to have to dive onto the Victor 1 once I fire it. The higher angle the torpedo is at, the easier it's gonna be for the Victor 1 to actually manage to throw it off. And as I mentioned a moment ago, I've only got a handful of torpedoes left and I cannot afford to waste one. I also do not want it coming back at me this time. And passing 500 feet. Head down towards 600. Looks like the Victor 1's maintaining just above 800. I'd say seven, between 750 and 780. That's 600 feet. All right. Just 
waiting for the submarine to level. I'm hoping we don't break a wire on launch this time. I would like to have some control. We'll bring it back to here so the torpedo arms and goes active a little bit sooner this time. All right, torpedo in the water. Still leveling and wire is stable. The Victor 1 heard us, it's just gone active on sonar. It heard the torpedo hit the water. And wire break. God damn it. The wire out of the back of these torpedoes, as you can imagine, is incredibly thin. It doesn't take much to break them. It was likely the fact that we were just slightly moving forward and the torpedo is moving directly to our 90 degrees that was enough to snap it. But it's okay. The torp is programmed so it should follow its own thing. Victor 1 is turning away from us. And our torpedo just went active. does appear to have acquired. Now, on the off chance that this thing comes back at me, I'm going to turn in and pull in on the Victor 1's rear. One, I'm pulling into the Victor 1's baffle, so it won't be able to hear me as effectively without turning in a manner that's going to make it an easier target for the Mark 48. So returning fire is going to be a pain, but it also puts me at an angle where it's relatively easy for me to be able to outmaneuver my own torpedo. is changing depth. It looks like the Victor 1's running for the thermal layer. It's going to try and breach the thermal layer in order to throw off the torpedo. It might actually make it too. This will be interesting to see whether or not this works. Oh yeah, it's, it's running for the surface hard. Now we're 10 degrees up plane at the moment, following slowly. It's rising faster than we are. It's giving everything it's got to get to the surface, and it's passing the thermal layer now. And the Mark 48 is still tracking, so it hasn't managed to throw off the torpedo at this time. God, the pings out of this Victor 1 are loud. As I understand it, in gameplay, the Soviets have worse passive sonar than the Americans do, but have superior active sonar. So, I'm not entirely sure from the angle whether or not it will be able to easily see me at the moment. It shouldn't be able to. I'm still in its baffles. Oh, Mark 48 is going in close. The Victor's, the Victor's still rising. Oh, it's turning away. It's going to punch the surface. What the hell is it going to do up there? Yep, there it goes. The Victor 1 just surfaced. We've actually lost good contact with it for a split second. And it looked like... Oh, no, nope, it managed to dodge the Mark 48 for a split second, but the 48's reacquired. It's cavitating on the surface at the moment, and that's a decoy. The 48's turned away, it's detected the decoy, it's manoeuvring in order to acquire from the side. Oh, no, no, there it is, there's the turn back. I thought it may have just gone off into the nether there for a second. Your bone sitting on the surface, there's nothing you can do at this point except dive. Uh, we just lost good contact for it. Oh wait, there's the explosion. That's interesting. I was under the impression that the Victor 1 would have been easier to detect when it was on the surface, but we were having a lot of trouble actually maintaining a solid lock on it while it was there. Thankfully, our torpedo didn't. I'm sorry, Boston, but your target was in another wolf pack. 
Unfortunately, these weren't the submarines we were looking for, but three more kills to our tally at this time. And oh, we got a medal. We just got the Silver Star. Very nice, but that doesn't change our mission objectives and we are running out of time before these commandos get unloaded, so let's get back to the hunt. So we've reached our next target, and this one tucked in tightly against the Norwegian coast. We actually have very little room to manoeuvre here. The seafloor is only at 712 feet, and our target is looking to be a Victor 2. Actually, I'm pretty confident with that. So we'll tag it as a Victor 2. Now, this is a little bit odd. We only have one sonar contact at this time. Now, I have seen groups of two submarines before, and I have seen groups of over four before, but I've never seen a single submarine, a Soviet submarine, operating on its own in the campaign in this game. So, at this point, I'm going to assume we're 6.5 off target. I'm going to assume that there's at least one contact here that I am not detecting. Now this is worrisome because, well, there's a little bit of noise in the water, but it's not that much. And I'm getting a really good read, 74% on this Victor here. In fact, this is such a good read, I'm going to have to take a shot at this thing in a moment. But what it also means is that if there is anything else in the water right now, it is really, really quiet. Quieter than the Victor class. Yes, I've got per I've got everything I need right now to take this Victor 2 down. I'm just I'm a little unsure about taking the shot because I don't have track of anything else. take it. It's too good a shot to miss and it's going to detect me if I don't take this shot soon. At the moment it seems unaware. It's not pinging. It, it doesn't know I'm here. Alright, tube 4 cleared. And we've got enough resolution here that we can actually see the victor. It's still unaware at this point. It hasn't hasn't changed direction, it hasn't accelerated. How did you not hear the torpedo fire? Now obviously there's no thermal layer here either, so there is no re Oh, there it goes. There it goes. It's heard the torpedo. It's going to flank speed, it's starting to cavitate, it's full port rudder. Alright, let's see how you manoeuvre. Yeah, now the wire broke again on the torpedo as soon as it was out, so it is under auto guidance. Again, I'm just firing this one passive head only. I'm not feeling the need for active torpedoes at the moment. This will be interesting to see whether or not he tries to use the surface in the same way that Victor 1 did in the last zone. Now, we're full starboard rudder at this point. I'm starting to turn in into the baffles of the Victor 2. The torpedo is active and has acquired target. It is closing in. We've got a new torpedo in the tube, ready to go. I'm maintaining 150 feet, we're ahead standard at the moment, and... What are you going to do? There's the Mark 48 closing in. You can't outrun the torpedo, Victor, what are you going to do? Yep, 
after seeing what that last Victor 1 did breaching the surface, I am honestly curious on exactly how this submarine is going to react. Especially in the shallow water, it's not like you can just dive for the bottom this time. The bottom's too close. Turning left into the torpedo, it's gonna drop a decoy here. It's trying to set up some... yeah, it's trying to knuckle. That's what it's trying to do at the moment. Looks like the 48 detected the knuckle and it's going wide. And we've lost sensor resolution, so we can't actually see it at the moment. But it's just dropped a decoy according to the map. And the 48 is still... Ah, oh, there it is. We've just got it back. 48 still tracking. 48 detected the decoy and it's going wide again. It looks like the Victor's going to try and knuckle the 48 again. It's interesting watching how the submarines or the AI actually reacts. But, nah. You blew it. And down goes the Victor 2. Now we just made a hell of a racket then, so I wonder whether or not we actually got any other contacts pop up. I didn't see anything in the feed nothing on the map either. So at this point I lurked around for almost 10 minutes. I was honestly just about to quit the mission when this happened. It actually looks like this may be the only submarine that's here. So this will be a first. A sole submarine. Yeah, we're not getting sensor contacts on anything else at all. Generally, Russian submarines are noisier than their American counterparts, even the more quiet ones. So you'd think at this point I should have had some kind of contact. I'm honestly a little nervous about quitting the mission, because if I quit the mission and there is... Torpedo, okay, hang on. Time acceleration off. There we go. Torpedo in the water, so there's definitely another submarine here, and he can see me. That torpedo is already active, it's hunting, and it looks like it's using an active seeker head. Right, let's 15, 15 down, and we'll go 10 degrees port rudder, or left hand rudder. This is gonna be sketchy, so I'm gonna try and get underneath this torpedo, but the torpedo's seeker head is already active, so it's it's probably going to acquire me anyway. Uh, we've got a moss loaded. All right. Just keep it silent for the moment because it hasn't actually acquired me at this point. Oh, that's but no, it's turning. about to turn back again. God, it would have to see me. It can't see me. Alright, we're getting awfully close to the bottom here. Um, yep. Torpedo is still pinging. Torpedo is still in a search pattern. And I think at this point I'm actually pretty safe. So, oh, we've got a new sensor contact. I saw that. We've got sonar contact too. It's down the vector for the torpedo, which is where you would expect it to be. But was that a blind shot? Or is whatever it is, can it actually hear us even though we're still in silent running? Nah, 
it can't be detecting us. If it if it did, that torpedo would have been a hell of a lot more accurate than what it was. What the hell are you? Sensor contact two. Well, it's not a Victor. It is not a Victor. And it's not a November. Um, Sierra, Juliet, Echo, Charlie. No, no, no. Maybe, no. Uh, and this is something that's... Five decibel very quiet that would fit too I, I haven't got a good enough uh, sonar reading on the last two bars so I'm not prepared to designate it just yet I really need more information on this I'm gonna go full left rudder full port rudder and from the bottom cemetery. Uh, we're gonna have to bring ourselves up from the bottom a little bit, I think. The how far do you have to be off the bottom before the tow to raid deploys? Um We'll go 15 and 15 on the ballast. I'm pretty sure you need at least 150 feet off the bottom before they'll deploy the toad array. I need to get a better look at this scene. A Sierra would explain why it was so hard to actually pick this thing up in the first place and why it's taken so long. But I just, I don't have a good enough reading on those last two bars to be sure. bit further up and bring us 90 degrees to the target's bearing so the total ray has the best chance of giving us information. We're up to 49% now for the solution. I wouldn't fire a shot at that. But that should start giving us in a moment a decent look at exactly what it is once we level out. 11 to target. Okay, so it's not a Sierra. Bars are up way too far for that. Uh, not a blue whale, of course. Echo, Juliet, Sierra. It's not an Alpha. It's not a Victor. Whiskey? Semi noisy, 152 decibel. It does look close. Yeah, I, I actually think it is. I'm going to designate that. I'm honestly surprised to see a whiskey class in the 1984 campaign. The whiskey class is a diesel electric sub that was built just after World War II. The first boats were laid down in the Soviet Union in the very late 40s, with them going into service, I think, in 1950. And they were based on the German Type 21 design. These things are old. Although, that would explain why it's difficult to detect. As a diesel-electric submarine, there is no active reactor on board, so if it's been sitting cold with its engine shut down, it's just a hole in the water. Uh, 
67% I'm pretty happy with that and make the torpedo go active about halfway between us about about there Torpedo away. We still have wire control and the whiskey just went sonar active. I'm still blown away that this is a whiskey in the 1984 campaign. I'm sinking what is effectively a World War II design with a Mark 48 in Los Angeles. This is just not fair. I'll look at it. Move the waypoint, it's already gone active. Shit. Um, let's drop a decoy. Um, 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 um. Okay, I'm gonna have to take manual control of the torpedo here. And it's a quiet wreck of the Victor. Nope, nope, turn, nope, turn away, turn away. I'm kind of thankful the wire didn't break on this one. Should have turned left, not right. It's trying to lock onto me now. No, stop, stop locking onto my submarine. Keep turning. There we go. That is a really pretty submarine. It's a shame what I'm about to do to it. Right, cross the torp over. And should oh. have the turning circle to bring it back. Ah, yep, it's going to bring it back. Manual control into the side. Goddamn Soviets, that thing's a museum relic. You shouldn't be sending that against me. Is still a very pretty boat. And so the results for this engagement mission update. Excellent performance locating and eliminating the enemy submarines transporting the commandos. It looks like the whiskey was actually the submarine that was moving them in. Bloody good thing I didn't actually quit out of that mission when a second submarine didn't present itself because otherwise this mission would have been a loss. Red sub sunk, ongoing military protection of the many NATO allied military installations through the theater remains a high priority. NATO's ability to maintain control of the region is founded on these bases. So hey, we made the news, but we are down to just three torpedoes remaining on board. So regardless of what our next mission is at this point, we need to head ourselves back to base. So at this point, we have been at war for four days. We've got the Silver Star and the Bronze Star, two missions completed. We have managed to sink four total warships, eight submarines, and one merchant, totaling 13 ships. 18,725 tonnage for warship tonnage, 43,255 submarines, and 9,600 for a total of 71,580 tons on the bottom. Not a bad patrol so far. Anyways, ladies and gents, I hope you've enjoyed the video, and thank you very much for watching. Remember, if you enjoyed the video and would like to help support the channel directly, check out my Patreon in the video description down below. Otherwise, until next time, remember to click that like button, subscribe if you want to see more, and as always, dive smart, dive safe, and I'll catch you on the depths.